Last time, I believe I said I wanted to discuss three features that Tocqueville regarded as central to American democracy. Uh, that is not to say they were central to the democratic experience, uh, but they are <coughs> central features of the American democ democratic experience and to what degree these can be or could possibly be translated to other contexts in, in other emerging democracies remains very much an open question. But of these three features, uh, the first uh, talked a little bit about on Monday is the importance of local government. Uh, the township, as it's translated in, 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 this, in this edition, what Tocqueville calls the commune, the community, community spirit, local government. Um, in some way connected to what he calls later in the book uh, the spirit of the city, using the city in the, here in the context of the ancient sense of polis, l'esprit de cité, the spirit of the, a, a kind of polis-like character in these small New England townships. Very important, uh, Tocqueville believes, uh, for the uh, uh, sustaining a, a democratic uh, country and a democratic society. But the second, and probably the aspect of Tocqueville's account of democratic uh, America that has received the most uh, attention, at least recently, uh, is uh, the aspect of what he calls uh, throughout the book civil association, civic association. It is these, uh, what one might think of as intermediary groups, voluntary groups, civic organizations of all kinds that have, uh, that, that Tocqueville is, is immensely impressed with and which he turns into one of the central pillars uh, of the democratic experience. He writes that in democratic countries, uh, one of the most famous sentences uh, from the book, in democratic countries the science of association, he says, is the mother science. The progress of all the others depends on the progress of that one. And it is through uniting and joining together in common endeavors, he believes, that people develop a taste for liberty, a taste for freedom. In America, if I can just quote him again, in America I encountered all sorts of associations of which I confess I had no idea and I often admired the infinite art with which the inhabitants of the United States managed to fix a common goal to the efforts of many men to get them to advance it freely. Uh, struck by the immense variety and multiplicity and, and sheer number of these various kinds of civic association. And it is, it is important to see, perhaps, this is one area in which uh, Tocqueville seems to most f clearly depart from Rousseau, at, at least Rousse the Rousseau of the social contract, after having said last time that his account of local democracy, township democracy, owes so much to Rousseau's account of the general will. But remember that Rousseau, in the social contract, had inveighed against, warned against what he called partial associations. Uh, partial associations like interest groups of various kinds that have the tendency to frustrate uh, the general will, that stand, as it were, between the individual and the general will. But Tocqueville, on the other hand, regards these kinds of voluntary associations, associations of all sorts, as precisely the place where we learn uh, habits of initiative, uh, cooperation, uh, and responsibility with others. By taking care of our own interests or the interests of our association, we learn to take care of the interests of others. Sentiments and ideas renew themselves, Tocqueville writes. The heart is enlarged and the human mind is developed. So he puts, you can see from a passage like that, how much weight he puts on these civic associations. The heart is enlarged, the mind uh, is developed. It is through these associations, PTAs, churches, synagogues, and other civil uh, bodies and association that institutions are formed that can both resist 
in its way the power of centralized authority, central government, but they are, are also, the, as it were, the locus, the seedbed where citizens learn to become, demo where we learn to become democratic citizens. It's very much important for Tocqueville that these associations, uh, which, uh, th the absence of which he felt very acutely in France, uh, which had already become a highly centralized uh, society. Uh, it was these, uh, these, these intermediary voluntary associations that stand between the individual and, and central authority, the uh, authority of the national government, which, which is what makes them for so important for him. And this argument about the importance of civic association, I say it has become uh, in a way the most uh, talked about passage or part uh, of the book in recent years is due in large part uh, to the influence of political scientist uh, Robert Putnam, uh, a man who teaches at another university, uh, called, uh, called a book called Bowling Alone. You've probably maybe heard of that. And here Putnam speaks about what he calls human capital, uh, what Tocqueville, uh, in, a li in less uh, obviously less social scientific jargon, calls habits of the heart, mores, habits of the mind and heart. But Putnam argues that it is this social capital that is developed through civic association. And his chief example, as the uh, title of the book uh, and the article from which it draws suggests, is that the bowling league is a kind of model uh, of civic association. And particularly, he is concerned with the decline of these associations uh, in contemporary American life, hence the title of the book, Bowling Alone. The fact that Tocqueville himself describes these civic associations as the product of art suggests that, that is to say, that they are not uh, natural. They are not uh, somehow uh, uh, the result of... Uh, uh, some kind of instinctual behavior on us. They are a joining with others in voluntary associations is a learned activity. Uh, it is something that requires a certain kind of culture and that and is a learned activity. It is something also, it is an art, it is a skill, it is a craft that can also be lost. And his argument is that more and more people are, so to speak, choosing to bowl, bowl alone. Uh, something that shows an alarming tendency towards isolation and the subsequent kind of uh, depletion uh, almost of our civic capacities. Uh, the question is, have our, uh, taking Tocqueville to the present, have our capacities for joining with others uh, been eroded uh, by the forces of modern politics and technology? Are, in fact, we becoming more and more a nation of solitaries and, and couch p potatoes? Uh, Jude, can I get you here for just a minute? Uh, these are some of the serious questions, and there is a big literature uh, that has grown up around it. And some of this literature uh, finds Putnam's uh, conclusions to be overdrawn, uh, that he exaggerates the uh, influence of these uh, associations, uh, the, or the decline of these associations. Uh, now I'll tell you this one. Uh, these associations. And in fact, uh, our civic state is not as bad off as he suggests. But what I want to do, suggest today, and this is where we're going to show a film, and Jude's going to help me, just a couple of clips, is that uh, there is a serious question, I think, in my mind, whether bowling leagues are a proper model for democratic association. Uh, now, one can say, in using the title Bowling Alone, that Putnam is just speaking metaphorically, that uh, he's not really, doesn't mean bowling leagues, but he's just use it, using it as a metaphor. But let's take him at his word, and let's find out uh, if bowling leagues are, in fact, the ideal transmitter uh, for democratic mores and values. And I want to take an example from a movie that I'm, of which I'm very fond, by the Coen brothers, called The Big Lebowski. <laughs> which is a movie about a bowling league, or at least three gentlemen who take their bowling in their bowling league very seriously. Uh, the three of them are the dude, who is a stoned hippie, uh, Walter, who's kind of a whacked out Vietnam vet, uh, and Donnie, who's a lost waif. And they are very, very concerned with getting into the finals, into the bow bowling tournament. And in their way stands a man named Jesus Quintana, 
who happens also to be a sex offender. And we're going to show, I want to show a couple of clips from this movie, and I should warn you that there is some very bad language uh, being used here. So if you think that is going to be offensive to you, uh, you should leave. Uh, it won't take more than about four, four minutes or so. And we're going to show a couple of clips about the ethos of men bowling. Civic Association. <laughs> The, eth the democratic ethos of bowling leagues, and I would assume three ideal democratic citizens. <laughs> well, I, I did that as a little bit of a joke at Professor Putnam's <laughs> expense, maybe, but, uh, you know, and, and I also really like the movie. <laughs> uh, and it's also really hard to follow something like that, too, I have to say. But, uh, uh, Obviously, it seems it goes to show that civic association alone is not enough uh, to uh, create uh, democratic citizens. Again, otherwise, Smokey and the Dude and Walter would be, uh, you know, perfect example of democratic citizens. Tocqueville focuses on a third and other uh, leg of the stool of democratic life, and that that is what he calls the spirit of religion, central. Again, a, a, the third and, I, and in, in many ways very important prop of uh, the American uh, democratic experience. On my, on my arrival in the United States, he observes, it was the religious aspect of the country that struck my eye first. Uh, very impressed with that. And like other European visitors to the United States, both then as well as now, Tocqueville was deeply struck with how democracy and religion walk, seem to walk hand in hand with each other, precisely the opposite of what has occurred in Europe, where religion and democracy 